we're back with part four of making an advanced oil rig and we're going to continue with uh, troubleshooting and then the distillation process so follow along now i've had some uh great comments throughout the day today of people telling me some advice and some interesting things so first i will note that um i did add this bin here and this is going to be the storage for the raw crude oil maybe um well definitely i'm going to move it i don't want it here my vision for this facility is to have a um sort of a living quarters off the corner of the control center here so the oil um, storage will be back here maybe mixed or merged with the back of this um slurry area but regardless for now let's just put it here it'll be easy to move after when i decide where i want to put it what so i added that i put a pump from the actual pump jack in the there and i solved the reason why the last video ended up with no drilling was because the um the swivel clamp was not engaged i didn't have any connectors to it so that's solved now and i went and cleaned up some of the systems here like you see this wasn't like this in the last video so now we just have a instrument panel for the um rotary table clamp and uh the rotary table rps we have the system to move up the swivel jack and then here we have the actual swivel clamp and rod like whether it's active or not we have our crude level here water level and slurry level as well as these um the mechanisms i may decide to put them on a separate uh instrument panel after with a little display above ideally there'd be a little display here that tells us these numbers instead of the uh dials i also was told that we've got the frequency now for our um we got the frequency which i believe is 7 11 or something uh don't quote me on that my apologies it's 7 10 with the channels one and two being the uh the drill head information the drill head down here or well head so that we've done this i've just kind of cleaned up the rotary table power is still on a just a regular throttle i may change that in the future i'm still kind of i mean this all takes time this isn't just a quick quick fix but and, and then i did the changes that i said i was gonna in the last video like i cut off the top of this and um the clamp i fixed it was previously in the wrong position now both these are in the right position i was also given the comment that this could if they actually separate them by one then you don't have to manually connect it you just have your clamp come and clamp right onto it while that is a great idea and i may look into that in the future i do like how clean this looks for one and for two the fact that uh it saves some space otherwise to get this many rods we'd have to take up half of this um whole area so for now i'm just going to leave it like this uh and what we can do or what i'd like to do is test whether this system works i haven't actually tried it out so meaning like whether it, when i plug in the actual swivel head and all this stuff are we going to start drilling and but before we do that actually another comment that i had so thank you to all my uh, fans and people that have been commenting giving me ideas and just sort of bouncing ideas back and forth so only the first uh, slurry filter is doing any work once the slurry goes the dirty slurry goes through the i guess where does it come only the first one's doing work the rest aren't doing anything so they have to actually be in a parallel system rather than a sequential system so we know the top is only water and it is in a parallel system whereas our slurry i believe this is slurry out right here oh slurry in my bad so we have to have this connection point have all the slurry coming into it so Let's see if we can actually be better than our 11. We were previously capped out at 11. 
So now this whole sequential system that I had is not working properly, which is fine. I mean, I'd rather learn and do it right and show you guys the right way to do it. So let's delete all our piping that currently is in place and find out the best way to have it. So, and then we know that this is our slurry in. So this one here is fluid in. So we have to have it all coming in, converging on this point. I'm just gonna denote in with green, whoops. In with green and out with red. Just like taillights and I guess yellow should be in. Headlights and taillights. Wait, I just broke it for myself. <laughs> that doesn't work. Slurry in, meaning we, we're gonna see taillights. My, on my ships, I usually just have it this way. So easier for me to remember. Red and green. So green is coming out and this is going in as we just confirmed. So we have this simply in. In is green. So we have to have them all converge on this location coming in rather than what we have previously here. And they all have to leave this area here. So the leaving will be easy because leaving is just this. It's gonna be the um, entering that I have to figure out because it's gonna be entering from the reservoir, the slurry reservoir. So slurry in, meaning it's as dirty as it gets. So this is fluid out. Okay, perfect. So we have it coming out and it comes out right here. And now it needs to go into all these. Now it's almost aligned perfectly. What we can do is even make it go up on level and then we'll just have everything coming out of one spot like this and then we'll have a pipe T head or T piece and now it all goes into parallel at some point we'll need a f uh, a pump as well because right now we just eliminated all of our pumps because they're on this circuit which is fine um, we obviously don't need any of this up here we'll just go ahead and scrap that and then we have the system that's back there that now has to so we're, anyway, we're feeding our slurry and then it's going to be coming out into this reservoir here and go then from the reservoir feeding back into here. So all this piping doesn't do anything for us right now because all of this is redundant or useless. Redundant isn't the right word, it's useless. Okay, then we're back to this and this is our water here so I may need to do another channel as well from our big pump so we can feed directly in alternatively what I could do is even have a just have it going into the slurry area like these are straight like a straight shot right in this one won't be and we're gonna need a pump so maybe it's better if we um, oh never mind that pump is feeding the front whereas this is coming in so the one that's coming in did not have a pump at least not yet so just a single pipe with this now at some point we're gonna need pumps so maybe this is the best place for them 
because we could kind of have it built in or just upside down right here. Of course, we see that this is slurry out, so we'll just make it match our out um, input. And then this will be our slurry in. I guess I deleted it accidentally. There we go. So fluid in. Something is not working up there. This is obvious. This is out. Okay. Slurry out. So this has to be out as well. Easy. We're just going to rotate it. Like that. Now they're both out. This one's out and this one's out. And it comes right into here. And that's good because that's all we need and we can just copy the system everywhere. As such. We'll copy it here. As long as this is in the right position, which it is. And then we just move it to all the locations. Make sure that it's aligned. So this is where we're going to get into trouble now, because this is actually our water uh, side of the reservoir, and this is our slurry side of the reservoir. So I'm just going to do the exact same trick I did up there. We're just going to cut a channel here. Just like that. So that's our slurry channel. And then we'll need to do the same for our water here into this just to make sure it's fully balanced out. Now that one was bigger for some reason. We did it like, oh yeah, I guess because it had the top and bottom. This one's only going to be four blocks wide, which is fine for us right here. Okay, perfect. That should make these uh, areas equivalent. Obviously we're losing some space with these blocks so we've kind of limited ourselves a tiny bit but I think this should be enough. Okay we now know we're pumping our slurry back into this and if the water was any test we only need the pump on one head or on one end. So this is coming, this is the dirty stuff coming into the top of the filter, being filtered through and pumped back into the slurry reservoir. Then from the slurry reservoir, it's being pumped out and into this. So actually that didn't change anything. It's still a single path going in. And likewise, it's a, this path coming out that goes to all these areas. We need to add electrical to our pumps. And we need to add the on switch for the slurry pump. What is the one? Oh, we do have one that stayed, I guess. Or no, that doesn't make any sense. Oh, I guess that we're, I see that's the one that's physically pumping into the wellhead or into the swivel. So there we go. Let's launch that, see if the efficiency is any better. We have all our pumps running full blast. Let's see if it's 11. 12.4, so a little better. 11, 10, 9, 8. Interesting. So I guess it's because they're further from the source. So the closest one is doing the brunt of the work. And then the rest are doing slightly less and less. Whereas I get, I'm assuming previously it was the first one doing everything and after that they were doing nothing. Um, is there a different, is there a way to change that? Prob, I mean, we unless we have multiple swivels, which we can't have, also the pump jack mechanism was on, but that's fine. All right, this seems to have done what we needed right now. 
and I guess we could start the, the test. There's nothing else I want to change, but I will go back to the drawing board just before we start and take a quick look. Okay, I did a quick inspection and let's see if we can start the procedure. So, I mean, I don't mind coming down here manually doing this. It seems to be pretty straightforward, but we'll see if I do an automated system afterwards. Okay, that goes back. This we gotta pull up. No, not the rod joining, sorry. The, this one has to go up so it clears the top of that. Now this one can go into place. Actually, I guess we have to raise this up a tad as well. So it clears the top of that. Maybe this can even be starting at that point. I don't... Ah, no, I like this because then we have a little bit of extra height. Anyways, this goes into position. And then we lower the rod down. going to clamp anything I'm waiting for it to click to the wellhead let's wait for it perfect so now we know it's in the wellhead we can clamp this we can clamp it to the actual um, rotary table we can clamp it not to the swivel yet but we could turn that on so it's ready for us now we can disconnect this and pull it back to the wall for our second second one and now let's bring the wall into place, position it so there's a rod ready for us. Oh, the clamp's not on. That's why I have that indicator. Alright, green is good to go. And now that it's in, we'll have a straightforward time to bring it into place but we have to lift it up past that otherwise it's going to clash right off the bat so that's where this now comes in because we could physically move this wall and it's not going to hit that roof and now we put it in place oh that was glitching out a bit but it seems that it stopped and now if we move this down a little or this, oh, kind of nailed that, but that's fine. Let's move this up now into place. Once that lights up, we join them. I love the system. This can go back. We don't need it, whoa. I glitched it out a little bit, I broke it because I guess I had the clamp on while it was, um, while I pressed the button so it may be it may be broken it looks like it fell off the track hmm how to fix that okay we'll definitely take note of that if it's clamped then you shouldn't be able to release the I don't know or just use your head I'm a strong proponent of using one's head instead of just relying on automated systems. I don't know if I could even weld it. Like, is it totally messed up? Maybe. If we cut power to it. This is why I like the power systems. This is zero. And if we jump to our welding truck, let's see if, um, maybe it did break slightly. And if we can fix it. No, nope. it's just full on glitching out. Anyways, this will be good enough. Th that doesn't matter right now. What matters is I want to see that the swivel attaches itself. 
and I want to see that we get our fluids pumping through. We can even start this mechanism. We'll put up our... Oh, I hear the rock. And I keep this downward pressure on this. We're getting steady RPMs. So, it's alive. Slowly but surely, we're going down. I'm gonna also make the uh, radio signal work with this so we can actually see the statistics of the well here. And then obviously the actual well mechanism does not need to be on right now. Though, it doesn't hurt because I'm guessing at some point it'll, once we enter into the, once we enter into the uh, oil reserve, this will start to shoot up as we start pumping that, so it doesn't hurt. But in essence, now you just have to leave it and let, let it sort of go and do its thing. So while I leave the, and what is our water levels, like how much is it dropping? I don't know what we started at, but if, assuming the slurry isn't wasted or isn't used up, only the water is used up, we're only at a difference of like a hundred. So, I mean, it is a slow process, but not bad if so far that's only a hundred. At some point, we'll have to have a truck come and refill our system. And I don't know if we want to turn this up, if that'll actually speed up our process or not. I know at some point it starts glitching out. Cool. I'm going to leave this and I'm going to come bring a tanker truck so when... Well, actually, no, I can't because I don't. I didn't put a. I didn't put a little nozzle for a hose. But where are we at now? Just for. So almost four meters. Okay. Very true to form. Very realistic as well. But regardless, we're pushing the wellhead through. Now I wonder if I disconnect the clamp from that well from the rod, whether it'll stay here, and when I respawn a new base, if that's going to stay there. So let's actually try that as I do this. Let's shut down everything. Stop this. We're going to bring this to a halt. Okay, we'll disconnect the clamp. We'll disconnect the clamp. Turn off the pumps. Turn off the clamp. So now we've released the rod in theory. So maybe when I despawn this base, also that thing stopped moving, that rod may stay there for us to continue. So let's see if I do this and I cancel this. Fantastic. So we're actually at a depth of four. I guess if I want to be cheap, I could just keep, once I run out of water, just keep respawning a new version of it with full with full water tanks. I mean, I know that's kind of milking the game, but that does seem to be possible. But I'm very happy. We've actually got down almost five meters and proven that our system here works. The slurry is working. The only thing that's not proven now is the distillation and this, as well as our radio frequencies. So I'm going to go and explore that and come back to you. I made the microcontroller for the uh, radio antenna receive for the drill depth and well depth. And I made a video for beginners how to actually make that themselves. But anyways, I will for now put it on a simple um, dial system and later I might increase it or mod upgrade it to be, uh, to be the um, displays so we'll have drill depth and well depth we don't have to go down there anymore okay so we got that going make sure there's power going to the antenna yes there is good and power going to these things uh, technically it should be coming from pump jack system so these guns that's kind of like the final process. I have it in stages and this is the final stage. 
So now in this case, we could actually see the depth of these, um, of that. And I went ahead and modified this to be a nice big structure with a little bit of a walkway through here. And then these windows that'll tell us quick sight, how close we are to filling up that reservoir. What I might do after when we decide how this um, can be distilled into other things, I might make this the distillation chamber. Like I might make half of it be the um, storage tank for the crude and then the distillation chamber in the back half. But for now, let's just um, make it like this and we'll have a, a simple little control panel. I also went ahead and put the water control panel here inside this chamber. So it's no longer wedged in between this. Instead, it's back here. I think that'll make it a little easier to fill up with water. If you have a tanker truck, come here and feed water to the to that. And likewise, I might make the uh, either on the side or well, front would make most sense and be the nicest. Let's put it right up here, front and center. Like that with this. So this is where we can pump in or out the crude. We don't have an emergency dump. And I wonder if that type of environmental catastrophe is <laughs> welcomed by the game. I don't know if it'll even let you dump dump the crude, but for now let's just make the assumption that we can. And we'll put a water or fluid fluid meter and the flutter as well. I know that is sticking out, but I do like when it's flush with the wall. We get that much more extra square cubic or cubic meters, cubic feet of liquid in there. So there we have it, and we'll have this say our crude crude level, crude oil level, sure, and crude oil emergency dump with that going there. And what we did for that one was we had it connected directly to the big battery. We'll just connect all three of these to that big battery. Then up here, this uh, dial has to match to this one here. So that to me is uh, almost where we need to be. Like we can pretty easily now pump the oil. And once we fill this in with oil, I'd want to take a sample of it in a tanker trunk and keep it off to the side for us to distill and see how the distillation process works. I don't know if we can actually spawn raw crude oil. Like, does it let us? Because if we could spot raw crude oil, then we could actually see, no, we can't see how it behaves when it's distilled. So now we actually have to collect it ourselves and then see how it behaves. But regardless, let's take this for a spin or rather start, start drilling. And once we've gotten the drill bit down and we're pumping oil, then we can at that point, we'll see what the tank can do and what the distillation process can do. Because I'd like to make this this whole, uh, this base, this operation, a distillation process as well. We'll take that back. We know we gotta lift this up. So, anyways, you guys have seen this. I'm just gonna start drilling and then wait until it's uh, ready for us to start pumping the crude oil. So stay tuned for that. We got it back up and running and actually it didn't have to restart from zero. So even though we had previously drilled and then we lost our rod, it's still showing up as the distance that we had had before. So that's good. The pump jack is going. I can hear the rock being crushed. Everything else is ongoing here. So this is giving constant pressure down. 
since we have this on, which is fine. Obviously, there is zero crude. The water is being eaten up, but the slurry is not. That's okay. So, now we just sit and wait. We've gotten 10 meters deep. I'm going to have to stop the system because the drill is now, uh, or the, the rod is almost spent. So we'll turn off the pumps, we'll turn off all this stuff. And now that that's good, we can take off the swivel clamp and raise this up and we'll be needing to insert a rod in here. Technically, we could probably put two rods even and just have that push that thing up all the way to the top. That'll be interesting, actually. Let's try that in a second here. So I don't know how that'll look, but regardless, we're holding this one on this in the uh, clamp, so we can actually bring this. Oh, we'll bring this whole thing up. We gotta clear that one. So once we've cleared it, we'll bring this mechanism over. Perfect. And then this one, we can bring it up. So we'll track up this and then lower this. And then we join them. Fantastic. So in theory, we could push. Ah, let's try it. I'm curious if it'll work. So let's move that up all the way up past the actual top of the creation because we have that opening on the top. So that's the idea that this lets us do. So now we're up real, that thing's up super high. Okay, we'll unjoin this and pull it back. Oh. It's glitching out. Hmm. That may be something I have to look into then. I guess we could just raise it to the top and that might even work. I mean, alternatively, we could just leave it in place until we need it need, and push it out. But I don't like that it's stuck, stuck in there. I guess it's because it's pulling, it's rotating right away and it gets caught on the pipe. Now that didn't happen earlier, so it's very strange. Otherwise, the system was perfect. Hmm. Okay, well, we learn. That's going to be something I'm going to fix in the next run of this. And we'll just bring the swivel head down and start to work. Once it's a little lower, then we could probably just pull this up off it. So... And down we go. Just a bit of ergonomics, ergonomics, ergonomics. I think that's how you say it. Ergonomics. Um, the RPS take ta uh, rotary table RPS and the clamp is here, and our swivel clamp is here. Yet our swivel clamp buttons are there. So definitely want to move them to the opposite sides. And uh, yeah, but we've reached 20 meters, so we're taking this thing up higher. And we happen to get this thing, this uh, free. So um, just by playing with it constantly, like just pushing it. Now, why is it moving? Interesting. Oh, I guess that's why it was moving. It was being pressed by it. Okay, there we go. Turn on the clamp. So we get our next round or our next rod on. There we go. Ooh. Did it fall? We dropped it. Interesting. Okay, well that's back in. Why did it fall? There we go. I was probably holding on to it too long. 
Okay, so back with the next rod. I got the uh, clamp system back and I'm going to see if it's possible to do what we said earlier. Like if it's if we have enough space to clamp the two of them there, do I have to make this path a little higher? I may need to like, whoa, if we check up here, how does it look? No, so we definitely can't, not without going a little lower. So we could, if, if we just take this a little lower, get that down there, but we can't in the, call it normal position. So I may want to extend that tower a little bit and give us the ability then to put two, two rods. So we'll get the power going and get the RPMs up. What just happened there? It consumed the, the rods. Oh my goodness. What on earth? <laughs> what just happened? Whoa, we're pulling our drill out. No. That's not what I want to do. Weird. So we have gotten a depth of 20. Okay. I mean, that's weird and bad and whatever, but okay, sure. We'll put another rod then. Okay, well, the game is glitching. I just keep adding rods and it keeps taking me back to the same place. So unless we're, where oil is, which I don't see, something is not adding up, but I'm just going to respawn a new one and see what happens. I did end up putting three rods in a sequence and now they're all going into the ground. We've gotten 24 meters now and we're still going. So that worked. And in my little break, I also updated the grabbing arm and now it works a lot better. The grabbing arm was updated to uh, to not get stuck like we did it on the rod. Instead it sways in the other direction, then back in the right direction. So this type of mechanism helps. So it seems to be working and drilling, so... Very good. Approaching 40 meters in depth here. I brought the tanker trailer over, plugged it into this. So once we start getting crude, we can pump it into the trailer for later to analyze how we can distill it. Now we're approaching 100, so I'm hoping it comes soon. Oh my goodness. That was fast, holy, didn't know there was a, that it was coming. Is that my truck floating away? Well, there goes the tanker truck. Jeez. but now 95. So we're making progress. I'm gonna go see to save the truck. Probably just gonna take this this tractor instead of the damaged one at this point. Yeah, it's even dead with batteries. Well, that's fine. Something you learn. Almost at a hundred there. 
we'll see when it breaks through. And 100. Keep going, friend. Let's find that oil. We'll have to replace another rod in. I did respawn the whole thing with new rods. But it seems to be working well. I mean, we did it. We got to 100. We just got our next rod on, and we're going deeper than 100. The mechanisms seem to be working good, especially this. After the little fix with uh, getting it snagged, now it doesn't get snagged anymore. Everything else is functioning as, as we want it to, so yeah, we'll see when we get to the oil. Something's happening in here. It's actually, there's some liquid. Now I have no idea if this is the crude or if this is the slurry, but for some reason I may not have connected it properly. It's still registering zero which is not good, but I do see that there's something in there. Hmm. Let's see if we could spray it out. No. So then it may be the oil, maybe crude. We'll stop the drill then. And I have to see what is going on exactly in there, whether that's the slurry or whatever else that may be. But we gotta find out. Of course, when I put my hose, I deleted my water sensor and all that stuff. So that is there now, instead of being the sensor that I need so that 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 is filling up so folks we've struck oil that is exciting I'm gonna keep the pump jack going for a little bit longer and keep I'm gonna keep pushing the uh, rod down a little deeper because I'm gonna respawn the base and I don't want that rod to clash with the pump jack and cause the destruction and stuff I want to be able to keep going but look at that, it's filling up. Holy, that is exciting. We did it, we did it, we did it. I respawned everything, and now's the moment of truth, folks. Let's see if we got the oil. Yeah, we do, there we go, there we go. So it works only on one of the motions on the downward motion and then up is nothing and then pump amazing wow we did it we have oil now the drill is at 111 meters and that is the first stage and the next stage is to see how we can process this and all that good stuff but this is a working platform now folks we got our oil so thank you for watching Stay tuned for more and um, I hope you enjoyed the video.